Hello, my name is Lena, and if you haven't been here before, well, this channel's just full of books and also social change and climate crisis discussions and existential dread. But its core is books. And I'm doing a series at the moment on my channel from popular demand of wanting to see all of my bookshelves, uh, a rainbow bookshelf tour. That's just because I have loads of books and I obnoxiously organize them by color, for which I will not apologize. And the way to show you those books without creating a feature film seems to be making a series of videos in which I show you all the books in that colour category and then I pick off a few from the shelf to chat more in depth about. Hopefully in this video you'll see books that I don't really have an excuse to mention on the channel, I haven't mentioned on the channel for years. Because I've worked in the publishing industry for a long time I often pick up weirder books than maybe you'd stumble upon in your local like automatically stocked Waterstones shade intended. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to limit your contact uh, with the outside world or you're trying to really cut down on bookshop trips during this very strange year. I'm hoping this can also serve as some kind of proxy browsing experience where you get to discover books that you've never heard of before. A few people pointed out in the comments in the last video that they hadn't noticed until the third episode in the series that I was dressing by the colour of the books I was talking about. Thank you for seeing me, thank you for appreciating the petty minute detail. I was very devastated this episode because I don't have any big dangly earrings that are green. I hoped this absolutely obnoxious for me makeup look will do. I actually feel a little overdressed but I'm kind of also loving it because glad Glamour is not one of the things, uh, not one of the words I associate with my experience of this year. So without further ado, we're gonna go on to the bookshelf tour and then we'll come back here and we'll chat about a few that I fancy talking about. So what we have here is the green shelf to situate you in the situation. These are the shelves, a reminder. Um, we've done pink, we've done yellow, we've done red. And now we're coming to green. So there is some serious contention about what I put on the shelf. Is this a green book? Is this a green book? The answer, my friends, is real estate. We're, we're maxed out. Only true green books can qualify for this student housing. That's just the kind of totalitarian regime we operate under. Uh, we're up Shits Creek and three books deep. And let's start over here. This is a poetry book with some history thrown in. I quite like the concept of that and I also really enjoy books that inspect Britishness and all the different ways it's fucked up. <laughs> I've never read this thing the whole way through but I do dip into it and I've enjoyed the bits that I have tabbed up and dipped into. We British by Andrew Marr. The poetry of a people. This is Craig's very tabbed up um, copy of Man Up surviving modern masculinity and he has survived so far so it can't be that bad taking a picture of my gross <laughs> manky fur <laughs> well what masculinity has done to me. <laughs> maybe not because i just caught craig taking a picture of his mangled foot <laughs> so <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> It was a story from the outside in. Overland, which is a book I fully intend to read because even if it's rubbish, I've never read a book in this format. Sideways, what the fuck? It's written from two perspectives and it's like printed sideways. I love a gimmick. Wow No Thank You by Samantha Irby. My copy of Little Women, which you may have seen me start to read to you in audio form. Link up there. <laughs> um, I've had this book for a really long time and it's actually on my list of things to throw in my rucksack when it all goes wrong. How to survive the end of the world as we know it. Tactics, techniques and technology for uncertain times. If you're surprised that I'm kind of a tinfoil hat bunker kind of a spirited person then you haven't been watching this channel long enough. It's got everything from building your barter stockpile, non-hybrid seeds, vehicle selection, how to perform minor surgery in a disaster we've got to know. Adventures in the Anthropocene. This is one of the only books that I could find about geology and the climate so I'm really excited to read that and this is a really nice edition. How to Live in the City by Hugo MacDonald. Frock Consciousness. <laughs> Classic London Review of Books uh, anthology name if ever I heard one. Uh, the Prophet by Cahill Gabrain because I thought this was cool when I was at uni and I've kept it around because I'd, I'd say it's my transitional Bible text. Like, it was when I was moving away from the Bible, but I was also not ready for, like, actual philosophy. Should we all be vegan? Probably yes. But I'll be able to explain that better when I've read that. One of my favourite books of all time, Remains of the Day. And I don't know if you guys have, like, a thing about this as well, but I really insisted on tracking down the exact edition that I studied when I did it at school and when I first fell in love with it because I'm sentimental like that and I like to read about butlers. 
Philip Larkin collected poems. Another hunted down edition of the same one I had at school because Ravenclaw Wing. Pep talks for writers, which aren't that great, but I'm waiting for them to get better. Eat Up by Randy. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she is Randy. <laughs> <laughs> by Ruby Tando. <laughs> Again, maybe you should live here, but the green spine would really throw me off, so... I really love the cover of this. I love how the author's name is in gold, and then it's this brutal house in between. I'm really excited to read this one. I just got it. How to Worry Less About Money, another School of Life book. My Sister the Serial Killer, which I fully intend to read at some point, despite people's divided opinions of it. <laughs> oh. Um... I'm fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just Sorry. exclaiming. Uh, uh. This is a beautiful book. It's called Bosom Buddies. Look at this. It's a celebration of female friendships throughout history. They're little anecdotes about um, friendships between women and celebrate them. So this is Virginia Woolf and Catherine Mansfield, Oprah Winfrey and Gail King. It goes all from olden times right up until Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. So I enjoy that and I just enjoy the concept as well. This would be a great one as a present, I think, for somebody. Not that I'm giving it away. That's my mate. The Tusk That Did the Damage, Tanya James. An emergency copy of Philip Larkin, because you can never be too careful. Some Wilfred Owen poems. The Elements of Eloquence, How to Turn the Perfect English Phrase by Mark Forsyth. Come Through Jen Campbell. The Girl Aquarium. My favourite copy of Wicked I've ever owned. I own many, but this one has green sides. Very pleasing. London Under by Peter Ackroyd. The Making of Home by Judith Flanders. Yes, this is just a history of furniture. Very cool, okay. This is an interactive children's Sherlock Holmes book with mysteries inside. Like interactive letters. Jen gave me this one. Spectacle of Deformity, Freak Shows and Modern British Culture. Uh, we have a video uh, kind of discussing this topic. Uh, I'll link it up here. This is a book that I did the publicity for like years and years ago. It's a proof. It's called The New Wild and it's all about rewilding. Again, I would love to do a video on real wilding at some point. I have lots of thoughts. A really nice edition of Matilda, a book about alternative education by A.S. Neal. It's called Summer Hill. Persuasion is my favourite Jane Austen novel and that may be because of its literary merit, but it may also be because it's the shortest one. Mm. My favourite George Orwell essay, Books versus Cigarettes, and some other ones in there as well. Ooh, maybe we'll talk about this one. The Defining Decade, Why Your Twenties Matter and How to Make the Most of Them Now. Let's definitely talk about that one. One of the several copies of this book that I have in my house, again for emergency purposes. Oh my god, okay. Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. We have to talk about that. We're talking about that. Speeches of Note, which is a huge coffee table book of famous speeches in history written by the guy from the Letters of Note. It's really, really good. Would recommend. The Green Roasting Tin, a cookbook I have never cooked from. Apparently have on my shelves anyway, but there are some vegan recipes in it, so I should probably try it. Bitten by Witch Fever. Um, this is a Victorian book about wallpaper with all the wallpaper samples in it and then little histories in between of like how they made it. <laughs> it's a niche gift, but a cool one. And one day I will lose my mind and like make collages and presents out of the wallpaper, but right now, I can't, I can't bear to. It's also about all of the arsenic that was hidden in the wallpaper and all the social and historical effects of it. Madness. Finally, again, in case you didn't know I was cool, this is a backstage history book of the history of the musical Wicked. Just in case you're wondering. So I ended up picking up that last Wicked book um, as the third book I'd like to talk about. But I also realised that on my <laughs> bedside table, and by bedside table I mean vaguely mouldy windowsill I keep my books on and sleep next to in the night because where are we gonna put a bed stand in this room? I've been keeping three green books on that shelf, so I missed them. Um, so to complete the tour, Zadie Smith Grand Union, which is a collection of short stories from Zadie Smith that's quite new. I'll be honest, the collection wasn't really for me. I, I've just finished it and I'm just kind of a bit like, mm. but I love the cover design of this, like, oh, my God, so vivid. Um, so if you're in the Gumption Club, which is my Patreon group, I'm probably gonna give this, I give away a book every single week um, to the Gumption Club people in our secret Facebook group, uh, and I'm probably gonna give this one away, so watch out for this one. Second is Danez Smith Homie. This is one of the best 
poetry collections I've read this year. In fact, I might talk about that one. Um, and then also Pondweed by Liz Blower, which you've heard me talk about before. It's on my TBR. It's, it's so imminently on my TBR that it made it to the moldy windowsill. Look at this cover with my top. Oh my God. Instagram me. So the first one I wanted to talk about is this graphic memoir, um, Fun Home. It's by Alison Bechdel, who invented the Bechdel test, if you've ever heard of that, which is the measure by which we test whether a film is sexist. And the measure is, do two women who both have names talk to each other for more than 30 seconds, I think it is, about something that isn't men. So the term Bechdel is thrown around a lot, but there's this incredible woman with this incredible body of work behind that name. I would go as far to say that this is my favourite graphic novel of all time. I was set it in my second year of university and I genuinely think before then I didn't know what graphic novels could be. I didn't know their literary mileage, I guess was one way to say it. This is a family tragic comic, uh, which is a genre I really like the name of. This edition has beautiful foil on it as well. And for once, the back is quite accurate. It says, Fun Home is a fresh and brilliantly told memoir marked by gothic twists, a family funeral home, sexual angst, and great books. In my second year of university, I took a queer fiction module and this is one of the books on it. That module blew my mind for a lot of reasons. In my defense, it was 2010, but I had never heard of Stonewall before. Like that's how green my mind was at, at that age and um i just remember that whole module blowing my mind and it changed the way i saw everything a lot a lot of things that and my structuralism lectures between this and reading gender trouble my tiny mind was blown this is a memoir about alison and her father it's about complicated relationships between parents and kids it is about coming out and queerness and breaking away from traditional expectations only to realize that perhaps your parents also have been rebelling in ways you hadn't realized and there's this narrative in it that i've actually realized is given away in the blurb so i'm going to talk about it alison's dad is a funeral home director and also a school teacher a very distant parent and also it turns out a closeted homosexual himself i just said closeted homosexual like i was 80 years old then but that's what it says on the back a closeted homosexual the memoirs kind of told backwards against this very gothic shadow of the funeral home and also their family home that he that her dad has kind of kind of turned into a really um, obsessive museum of perfect objects that children can't touch um and it's also a book about grief about retrospective about seeing your life in reverse and making sense of things after they've happened. It's written and drawn by Alison Bechdel and the colour scheme is this really cool toned blue the whole way through, which as well gives it this really like haunting gothic look to it. If you're a literary nerd like me as well, there's lots of Easter eggs and parts where she's reading famous feminist texts in it. And it's just like one of the most gut wrenching books I've ever read. I haven't read many books that deal with really inconclusive, uncomfortable, painful parent-child relationships like this one. And I think it's really special in that way it refuses to come to conclusions, it refuses to make light or make sense of things, but also at the same time ends up making a lot of sense out of stuff. And Fun Home is also a musical that I did get to see when it came to London and it was just one of the best, I just sobbed the whole way through, it's one of the best things. The musical obviously brings out the humour of the story a lot more and there is like a real dryness to the way Alison wrote this, so I don't think it's inappropriate to make a musical out of it. But like also by no means conflate the two. This is like really something that stands on her own. And she also went on to write a memoir about her mother as well. And a really famous like um, comic series called Dyke's Torch Out For, uh, which I also recommend. I used to have a copy of that, where did that go? Anyway, this is one of my favorite books ever. I wanted to quickly mention Homie by Denez Smith. You might know Denez Smith from Don't Call Us Dead, which is their poetry collection from a few years ago. This is their one that came out in February. I love this collection even more than their first one. I think it's incredible. It deals with violence and xenophobia and death, but it's also incredibly funny and incredibly moving. The images that they paint in it are incredibly vivid. I think the only way to really give you an impression of this book is to read out some of the titles of the poems. Homie is the second title for the book because um, they wanted to call the collection this, um, but then they write inside it. This book was titled Homie because I don't want non-black people to say out loud. Um, this book is really titled. Um, so I think that's like worth mentioning as well that like positioning to privilege is like a big 
theme of the book as well so I think that's really interesting titles like I'm going back to Minnesota where sadness makes sense waiting on you to die so I can be myself all the good dick lives in Brooklyn Park say it with your whole black mouth sometimes I wish I felt the side effects you kind of get the um, tone of it at least I guess from that but it's just if you're gonna pick up one poetry collection this year I would I would uh next is the defining decade um which kind of covers a lot of like my most common requests for books, which is like, what is the one book I should read in my 20s? Um, it feels really obvious to be like, this book with a the, with the number 20 on it. <laughs> Meg J has a TED talk that I'll link below. I saw the TED talk and then immediately bought the book. I've dogged so many pages in this. So basically the bee in her bonnet is that um, because our financial situations are changing, um, the opportunities that people in their 20s are being given are changing. Um, there is this like phrase or mentality that 30 is the new 20, that like, you know, you just like kind of mess around and be on your gap year the whole through your 20s and like work out who you are in your 30s, like who cares? And her, she has a real bee in her bonnet for the dangers of that. And she says, I urge 20 somethings to reclaim their 20s their, their status as adults and their futures. This book will show them why they should and how they can. In these pages ahead, I want to convince you that 30 is not the new 20, not because 20 somethings don't or shouldn't settle down later than their parents did. Almost everyone agrees that work and love are happening later, at least much because of economics as because they can. I want to persuade you that 30 is not the new 20 precisely because we settle down later than we used to. What this has done has made the 20s not an irrelevant downtime, but a developmental sweet spot that only comes once. If you have passed your 20s and that's, that paragraph makes you freak out, like you can definitely read it now. And I think a lot of the stuff is just real emotional intelligence and real kind of like how to work out what you actually want um, out of the, your relationships with your family, the kind of friendships you want to cultivate and how to spot a bad friendship, how to date with intention. <laughs> that sounded very silver ring thing but like how to not cohabit mindlessly but like really work out um how to get to know yourself in a relationship and work out whether you're in the right one for you and it's also like something i look for in books now because i'm getting old is the references like i i like studies to be well documented at the back i like a thorough appendix um and i just think it's like a massively good book like i only found this in my later 20s and like frankly furious that I didn't have this as soon as I crossed over the threshold of midnight of my 20s um so I'd really recommend that and then finally I just wanted to talk about my love of Wicked because I haven't done that in a while and I used to do that all the time on my channel while also cock teasing you by, um, by telling you that I will one day do a video essay on Wicked which I still haven't done but I haven't forgotten about and it is kind of scripted. Wicked is a book by Gregory Maguire, a fact I've pushed on the world frequently during my 20s because everybody just thinks it's a musical and that twists my nipples, really annoys me, hurts in a very real an unusual way. Wicked is obviously a musical and it's a great musical. Like I obviously love the musical because I bought this. Look at this portrait of Dr. Dillerman. There is actually me and Hannah and my friend Hannah Witten, we got to go backstage at the Wicked in London once and she got to ride the bubble. I, if I have footage of that, I'm gonna show it here. But like the nerdiness of being able to go into the costume hold below the stage and see all of the different Oz outfits, like, is one of the defining experiences of my life, I think. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, um, Wicked is a book. It was originally a book, it got turned into a musical. Uh, Rumours have had it for many years that it one may be turned into a film. I'm very worried that instead we just got this, but... I think it will one day come. But Wicked is the retelling of The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, um, about the real identity of the Wicked Witch of the West, her genesis, how she came into being, and her life, basically. It's pretty much what Frozen is based on, for which I'm sure Gregory has got none of the royalties. And it's the tale of Elphaba. 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 The musical might give you the impression that it's about female friendship and forbidden love. Uh, it's not about that. Those things happen. Uh, but as you can see, there's quite a lot to unpack here. It's quite a long fantasy novel with a pretty nerdy map at the beginning. Um, and just for context, I'm not a fantasy fan. I don't read fantasy. I just really love this book. And I think if you don't like fantasy, you shouldn't be scared off by the fact that it has a map at the front. But I would say if I was going to be cornered and in my undergrad dissertation that I wrote about this book, yes, this is what I wrote my underground, underground, it was underground, my undergrad 
dissertation on um, was, yes, this book. This book is about the conflation, and I want to say this really confidently now. <clears throat> this book is about the conflation between femininity and terrorism. That is, that is, I won't hear of it. That is what it's about. It's about the othering of terror, how we define terror, and it's told through several layers of metafiction, which is what my dissertation's about, and one day I'll bore you about with my alleged video essay that will allegedly come. Elfa becomes from a very strict religious family, which again is a huge part of the book and not a part of the musical at all. A lot of how her radicalization is explained is the fear of secular thought in women and how breaking away from religion and government is um, unfeminine. And then also like any good book that has been perverted by a uh, great, but perverted musical uh, is that it doesn't have a, there is no happy ending here this is not it's not the there's a lot more about race in the book and um huge allusions to anti-semitism and how we treat that and how that can be dismissed without cause and it's how the country of oz rewrites a woman into a into a villain and it's not like i i really do like retellings of villains because i don't think humanizing is the same as glorifying in fact i think it's kind of the opposite but i but uh, but this isn't like a lot of those are the ones i've read this is a real like anti-capitalist manifesto and i adore it as you can tell maybe i've thought too much about it maybe you won't see that in the book when you read it but hey a bitch can try oh so now the sun comes out that's cool that's brilliant thank you so much for watching this iteration of the rainbow shelf tour uh, which color would you like to see next let me know these videos are free to watch uh, but they are free to watch and made available to you because of the gumption club which is a small group of wonderful people uh, who tip me per video to make them happen if you'd like to be one of those people and also part of our secret facebook group where we have wholesome film club and we watch films together uh, and I do live streams and I give you little extra podcasts and all sorts of little things as well as giving away some books you can look into joining the gumption club for as little as a dollar per thing in the description I also have a newsletter you can sign up to for free where you can get more recommendations from me that I don't put anywhere else more book videos here thank you so much for watching and until next time frogs log out